I would like to think a good portion of golf coaches would agree with me when I say we are glorified alignment sticks. As the majority of my fixes, especially out on the golf course for your golf game, is just getting you to aim at the target correctly. Guys, how you doing? Welcome back to a brand new video at Simon down here at Sanford Springs Golf Club. Cheapest way to improve your golf game at any level because unfortunately alignment and where we perceive our body to be aiming always changes. You'll probably see over the last three years of my videos me being massively closed, massively open to the target continuously uh, and it doesn't change. Therefore, I know it is a bit arduous, but I honestly would and always do, by the way, recommend this training aid to pretty much any level of golfer if you want to get better, especially with the short game, the putting, more importantly, but then backward chaining, if you can do it from six foot, 10 foot, 15 foot, 20 yard chip shots and so on, then maybe you might fix your swing path issues with the higher end of the bag. Now, I did say this is the cheapest way to get better at golf because I didn't pay your typical £10, £12 um, uh, cost for a line me up that you would see uh, in your traditional pro shop or American Golf or anywhere else for that matter. I actually bought 100 of them for 70p each. And the reason I did that is because, well, I can't suggest anywhere for my lessons to go and get them. It was very easy when I was attached to a golf club, I'll go, just go to the shop and buy one. Um, whereas now, and to be honest, let's be, if you spend £10, and it shades four shots off your round. Let's be honest, we'd all do that. Um, uh, but I just couldn't get hold of them and I thought, what's the best way? And well, I've got your knockoffs right here. Um, bit of plastic, that's gonna save you a lot of shots. 70p each, and I'm just gonna give them away to my lessons um, uh, when they require them, which pretty much after you watch this video, I imagine all of them will, so I'll probably have to order some more. Guys, if you like this video, leave it a like. You liked the coaching video last week, which I do really appreciate. I don't really do coaching videos and I wouldn't class this as a coaching video but I do see very common mistakes with a lot of golfers and I think that's why the last video did so well because it kind of relates to a lot of you. And I imagine some of this video is gonna to relate a lot to you as well um, as arguably alignment is the most important part of the game. Okay, so before we go on to alignment, if we watch the last video, we know impact is beyond more important than anything else in your swing. Like if you're aiming massively left or massively right at the target, but keep finishing it on the target, I really couldn't care less. But it's very unusual for people to be good at putting, especially, and come across the ball or come into out or vice versa, they have to keep their club face closed or open because of it. Now, this isn't anything new. And if you watched the last video, I went into a lot more detail, especially in the full swing of why we do this and why we compromise. However, this little aid now, because of the lines that we have on the ball, is our putter track man for 70p. Because you'll watch the golf on TV a lot and the majority, if not all of the golfers, when they hole a putt and the camera's down low like this, you'll watch the ball go into the cup and that line travels end over end. And this is one of the best tips I possibly can have for any of you if you want to be better at putting. I don't care how you hold the putter. I don't care how long the putter is. I don't care what putter you use. But if you are somehow able, even with your eyes closed, one-handed, to get this line to travel end over end, like the majority of the best golfers in the world, then you're obviously doing something right at impact. And that's why I call it a mini putter track, man, because if this line goes all over the place when you're hitting the ball, it means because you're coming across it, or you're closing that club face, or you're hitting up, or hitting down, and that ball, that line starts then reverberating. The reason, I'm talking about this line, by the way, down the middle. This one at the top here is more of my own personal taste. Because one of my eyes is more dominant, I feel like that line at the top there helps me align my putter up square to the ball. And the majority of times, if I haven't practiced my putting, I don't believe that line on top's correct. I'm like, no, that's aiming massively left. It's only when I practice and practice and practice with this kind of setup, ball aligned to the hole, 
putter aligned to the hole and I know it's a flat putt you have to practice this by the way on a completely flat putt you can't do this on a left to right right to left to start off with because then there's too many variables I want it on the carpet at home I want it in your mini astro putting turf that you've got out in the backyard as long as it's level I hope you put it down level because then you know wholeheartedly whether that putt is coming in directly at target and that putter face is also on the line and then you're going to get that beautiful roll towards the hole and this is why the perfect roll i.e end over end will benefit not just your short putts but your long putts and it's mainly because if i'm aiming left which a lot of people do because a lot of people align themselves left because they hit a big slice so they compromise by going like this if they're aiming left at target not knowing that they do it they have to leave this club face open which then means that their putting stroke tends to be a lot like this. Now, I'm not saying you can't hold a putt like that, and a lot of you potentially can putt very well like that on the short stuff. But if I had to then do a 30-foot putt, it means that all of a sudden I'm having to guess even more how open to keep leave that club face, how much I should be coming across the golf ball, and if you're especially on fast greens, it just makes it so much more difficult to gauge it. When you're rolling a ball end over end, any putter will get the ball from 50 foot away towards the hole because you're purely going through the ball you're not wasting energy glancing it just like we're doing with the drivers if we're coming across the ball we're losing ball speed there's no point buying a 400 pound driver if this is your impact position because you've lost 20 percent of your ball speed before you've even started make sure you're aligning yourself up to the target balls aligned correctly and we're trying to get that ball to go end over end all the way into the hole that was a good putt very bad read <laughs> but then that brings me on to my next point if i'm constantly hitting putts or i have a lesson that is hitting putts like that end over end well it's not their stroke their stroke's fantastic i know it's their reading all of a sudden they're either under breaking or over breaking or giving it too much whilst they're out on the golf course but if you're doing both, a bad read and a bad putt has the potential of going in. A good putt and a bad read, or a good read and a bad putt, never has a chance of going in. So if you can at least give yourself that edge in giving yourself a perfect roll each time, and you can't tell by the way, unless you put that line on the ball, I'm not saying for the more advanced players, I'm, the guys that are putting better than me, you know what you're doing. But if you have no idea, whether your putting stroke is good or not, or put a line on it and you go find out quite quickly. Now I've just spent the last 20 minutes trying to get some kind of B-roll footage of me putting a ball end over end. And let's be honest, well, I've failed because if it wavers anywhere, bit left, bit right, you've either made a bad read or you've hit that putter offline, i.e. the club face is open or you've put a tiny bit of side spin on it. It has to be perfect and that is why I suggest and I'm not giving myself excuses why I can't do it because let's be honest, I don't practice my patting enough nowadays. Carpet in the bedroom, line this ball up with a tee peg, obviously get it standing up and then just hit it. Majority of your carpets at home are gonna be perfectly level and you can stand there for the next year. Figuring out what works for you and this is the only way I got good at putting. I stood there for an hour every night hitting 30 putts. That's it. 30 putts does take you a while, by the way. 30 putts, hitting the ball towards a tee peg. And slowly but surely, I found different things in my putting stroke, i.e. tucking my left arm into my chest, trying to feel like my left eye was over the ball. I'm not saying these are all things that you're gonna come across. I'm just saying they work for me. And if you spend an hour every night, if you wanna get good at this game, hitting a lined up ball, ball? a lined up ball, towards a tee peg on a perfectly flat ground, you will slowly grain away to a perfect stroke. That is natural to you. That's how I got good at putting at one point in my career. Hopefully it helped you. And being self-aware of where you're aligning yourself to the target is so important. Backward chaining, again, is one of the easiest ways to do it. If you can get a neutral path with your putter and the club face at the target with your shoulders, feet, whatever it is, aligned, parallel that's important parallel to the target then you might be able to do it with your chipping and if you can do it with your chipping then you might be able to do it with your with your wedge shots 
and then so on and so forth. I improve so many golfers' games purely, as I said at the start, aligning them to the target. And it sounds so simple, but what we feel we do and what we're actually doing are always two completely different things, unless you're very self-aware and unless you do these kind of drills. 70p, five pounds, 10 pounds, 100 pounds, the time and effort comes into you putting it into the game. That's where you're gonna get the real value. I don't care how much you spend on the aid, you just need a measurable constant, i.e. that line going over the ball, to purely know what that club face and swing path is doing at impact. So guys, there we have it. There's my cheapest way to get good at this game. Obviously, it's gonna benefit your putting as well, but hopefully some of the stuff linked over into the rest of your game and do keep alignment very much at the top of your priorities when you're out on the golf course because if you're one of these players that hits very good shots on the range, but not necessarily on the golf course, this potentially could be the reason why. Guys, thank you ever so much for watching this video. Leave it a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you're new. See you guys later.